I would tell you, you better do something with that beard. I, like, <laughs> I know that. Well, I'm just saying, like, if you're going to go, if you're going to go talk to the recruiters about being an officer. Oh, I'm not coming with this on. You can just clean it up. Like, it ain't bad right now. Right. Yeah. But like. I gotta go to a barber. I haven't shaved in a long time. <laughs> well, you got PhD from Oxford, my dude. Nick, you ain't got, you know what I'm saying? Like. Got PhD I know, from Oxford. I know, it's not a pretty, much can up, pretty much can show up any way you want to. Got PhD from Oxford. Yeah. You know you're going to have to shave when you go in the military, but I'm just saying, like, like, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if you've seen any of my videos talking about dirty face or homeless look, right? Yeah. When you ain't got a PhD from Oxford, you got to be shaving. Like, when you go talk to the recruiters, because they're not going to take you serious. But you got a yeah. PhD from Oxford, so they they really can't say shit. You could show pretty much in your underwear, and they'd be like, oh, shit, okay. All right, PhD from Oxford. Let's... Let's let's get this guy going. But I want you to see if you can grease the skids a little bit before you do that. I don't know how much you watch some of my videos. I don't ever like to walk in the front door with everybody else. I just don't like to do that, right? Like I think walking in the front door is for fools. I'd yeah. much rather be in walk in the back door and be sitting in the front row. When everybody else gets let in from back there, I'm sitting in the front row, been sitting there talking to the presenter for the last 20 minutes. That's how I like yeah. to do things. But to do that. You got to do a little groundwork and, and get your ducks in a row and then try to find somebody to kind of sponsor you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like what kind of household did you grow up in? I failed high school. Fucking uh, love it. Love it. I went to community college and then kind of built myself up through academia. Then I realized I absolutely hate academia because it's nothing like uh, what I'm used to, what I'm from. Um, I just don't enjoy it. Um, and even before I got into that, uh, you know, I was always thinking about going into the federal government that kind of sucked in 2017, um, okay. again, right now. Um, and my other option from that was to be competitive for a lot of those federal jobs to join the military, because then you're accessing those GS 11s, those GS nines, uh, yeah. right off the bat with these degrees. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. And so now you found yourself, you got a PhD. What's your PhD in from Oxford? Politics. Okay, so politics. Very um, data heavy. What do you need my help with, I guess is a better way to put it. Yeah, so really my, my biggest questions right now are revolving around, do I do a standard Intel officer route into either the Army or Navy okay. or do I try to do what I would really like to do in the army, which is to try and get into the civil affairs pipeline? What makes you think that if you don't like academia, you're going to like being a civil affairs officer? Them two things are pretty much the same. same oh, animal. I know. So <laughs> if I have to write reports forever, I'd rather have benefits on top of that, which right now, of course, I have a billion student loans that I never paid off because I was doing academia, defer, defer, defer. Um, it, it's not that I don't like research or report writing or even pedantic bureaucracy. I just hated the people. Um, I kind of like the process. That's why I stuck it out and, and finished, right? Absolutely. Uh, it's, a good, hey, it's a good process to have now. The good PhD from Oxford and fucking basket weaving is a good, good problem to have. Yeah. Um, on top of that, it's not like this career field is has a lot of job opportunities right now. Um, it absolutely does not, especially in what I did. I'm a specialist on Russia, which you would think there's a million opportunities. Most of them go to prior service. So prior service, prior Russian. Like my roommate Kaz was Russian. Yeah. You know who, you know who the secretary of the, the Russian secretary of defense came over to the Naval Academy. You know whose interpreter was? Who? Him? My my freshman roommate. Because my I met the roommate was Russian and spoke the best Russian on the on the yard, and we were like, "Oh my God!" Like the, my dude was the Russian interpreter for the for the Secretary of Defense. It was crazy, but you know, as I tell people, like, are they going to get you to go learn Chinese and go speak Chinese? Or are they just going to get one of the you know fifteen million Chinese people to live in? Well, that's probably more net. You know, a, go get a, a Chinese dude that speaks fluent Chinese to do it. Um, okay, so let's, I, I asked you about flying, you know, yeah. I'm a big proponent of flying, you got a PhD, you're smart, you know how to study, okay? Yeah. Um, I guess my thing would be, like, 
you want to go on civil civil affairs in the army or psyops or you know like how much do you work out right now right now i'm getting back into i just moved back to the u.s from england so i had that month where i was moving which sucks so i was off for a month now i'm getting back into it It'd probably be five days a week um, yeah. mainly doing cardio right now just until i can scrape up some money for the gym I mean, cardio is good, bro. So you know, I, I, you ain't asking. You ain't trying to go with fucking Army Rangers or Navy SEALs. So as long yeah. as you got some cardio in every day, you'll be fine. Right. Okay. So let me ask you this, because I don't, man, I just don't like, I don't like the idea of just sending you in the Army as a, as a, like, it's hard to go get intel officer. Like, they're going to see your PhD from Oxford and politics. And they're going to try to get you into something that you want to do. But I also, you know, you could go over there and be, I don't know, I don't know, a logistics officer. Like, they could make you do what any number of things, right, rolling the dice going in the military. Now, do I think four years in the military would help you on the government side? Absolutely. Because you at the end of the day, you got a PhD from Oxford. And... Yeah. Anytime you want to go into a think tank, anytime you want to go to the Pentagon, you know, like you want to put your name in for a GS-15 job or a GS-14 job to come out of the military and go into, you're going to be able to do that where you're not going to be able to do that now, right? Like no one's going to hire you as a GS-14 on anything. They won't like, hire me as a GS-7 right now. Yeah, so. like, like, but if you go do your four years in the military as an army officer, I think that opens a ton of doors for you. And it also opens a ton of doors for you to go work for the three-letter agencies. I don't know if you thought about that. I, I mean, that's always on somebody's mind. Um, I met most of the Russian counterparts on that side, uh, so <laughs> I might not have the best packet for them. You, you say you saying you got a lot of Russian counterparts because of what you did at Oxford? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you. I mean, shit. I, mean, I don't talk about right? like You studied Russian and uh, Russian at, Russian at Oxford. You know what I'm saying? Like they're gonna pull some threads on you, and they're gonna dig in your ass for the, for the clearance. Dig. But which is nothing bad in my record at all. No, no, I'm not saying that. It's just they get real, they get real squirrely when you yeah. know you got a lot of contact. Like my dude said, the number one hang up on clearances is foreign contact. Yeah, and you just spent how many years you spent at Oxford? Three, four, uh, four years at Oxford, uh, seven abroad. Okay. So, you know, like, that's a lot of time overseas. Yeah. Um, okay. So I, I can't just run into those places right now. I need to build up some credibility of being American again. I got you. So what do you want to do? So in the military or overall? Just in general. Because, like, see, you call me because you don't have no direction. I don't really see a clear yeah. path for you. Um, yeah. I don't see a problem with going to do four years in the army as an officer. Like, I think that'll clean up a bunch of stuff for you, but you know, are you a runner by nature? Am I a runner? I sometimes I'm not a big fan of running. Okay. If I just asked. Ball, because, I like, run all day. So one of the things that came out of this last army board, they took out of the 95 guys that they picked up for OCS, 94 yeah. of them were in the top percentile of, of like, physical fitness they were in the high category which mean they they ran like 13 minutes or less on a two mile mainly most of them ran like 12 30s or less on a two mile and that's really the yeah. defining factor on the test like the two mile is the defining factor so that's the only reason i asked that because like if you got your budding gear right now it's july 16th you seven or 15th i think whatever it is you could put a package in for october and you possibly could be going like January, February, March's time frame, right? Of next year. But I don't know. It's one of those deals where I got another lady I'm helping out. She got a PhD. She can't get yeah. a job. Yeah. Right? Because a PhD, you'll get a PhD in something that one isn't relevant or two, you don't have any work capacity for, right? Like you haven't been doing career counseling and you got a phd in social counseling and you're trying to get a job and everybody's like you don't have no hours of social counseling you know i can't can't give you a job you know so yeah um the good thing is you go get a clearance though right yeah. like you can you can go get that clearance start the clearance process 
Because that's really your big hang up going to work for one of the three letter agencies. Yeah. What do you what do you want to do? Like what if you could go do what's the coolest thing in the world you could want to go do? Like what do you want to go do? I mean, you already hit the nail on the head of what I eventually want to do. Um, but to get to that stage, I need to build some credibility, build a little bit of at least some job capacity, right? Because okay. getting into intelligence is completely different than like, yeah, I can talk to Russian officials all day and do some open source data, but that's completely different from what they actually do for their work, you know? What, a, what about what teaching? You, you don't want to teach at all? I like teaching. I'm good at it. I'm very good at interpersonal skills and um, that side of the spectrum of things, which is why civil affairs actually appealed to me a lot. Um, but in terms of teaching for a university, no. Uh, yeah. I, I I need benefits. <laughs> uh, all right. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, it is what it is, right? Like, you don't get no benefits teaching as a professor? Not nearly the amount that compares to the federal government. The federal okay. government will pay off my loans in 10 years. So that's an extra 15K in my pocket. Okay. I pay the same. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. All right, let's do this. Yeah. I don't, man. If you were cyber, I'd make a phone call, right? Like, if you had a PhD in cyber, I'll make one phone call. But PhD in politics is a tough one, right? Like, it's, I mean, all of my stuff is data heavy and it is in different languages. And so I was doing a lot of uh, corpus linguistics on most of that stuff. So okay. I'm actually not adverse to trying to go for um, cryptographic warfare. But at the same time, I know that there's probably much better STEM based candidates for that, where I probably would do better. In that. Listen, listen, I tell everybody, I don't care. All that matters is how you think. Yeah. There's not a single job in the military that I couldn't go do other than maybe being a doctor or a dentist. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I probably could go be a dentist because I'm an artist. I'll, I'll figure out teeth real quick. Okay. As far as being, <laughs> they may not, the fillings may not look perfect, but I'll be fine. Right. Um, <laughs> I would say this, man, why don't we just look at like, have you went and talked to the recruiters at all? Yeah. I talked to one a little bit ago, but it was over the phone. I was in England. Okay. Man, are healthy wise you good? Yeah. Um, you ain't have no drugs or nothing in high school. Like, not, I'm not talking about using drugs. I'm talking about like uh, Adderall or depression or anything crazy like that. Asthma at age nine. Did you get prescribed medicine for it? Age nine, never prescribed after the age of seventeen. Mm. Yeah. I'll right, that, may be, I, I, that may be a that may be a tough role right there, because you yeah, know they but, got the new they got the new Genesis system, and that mug is going back to day one. Any drug you've been prescribed, back. they that's why they they have so much hard time they having a hard time with recruiting right now, because yeah. they're able to go all the way back to age zero and see every drug you've been prescribed. I mean, can you get a waiver on that? Asthma is one of them ones that they don't like to waive. But what I'm gonna say is. I tell everybody the same thing. You just don't say nothing about it. And you go in there and they just answer no on all the checklists. Yeah. And then you, if they find it, then they're going to talk to you about it. You say, I yeah. ain't no problems. I ain't no problems. Exactly. Huh? Yeah. Um, it's not a I run way more than I did when I was nine. Absolutely. How much, or who do you got for letters of recommendation? Like, so you I have anybody my... military? I mean, I have friends in the military, but that's not the same as my supervisors. No, so I, that's fine. Who are your friends in the military? What are they doing? Uh, they're all enlisted. So uh, I have a chief petty officer. That's probably the highest rank I have other than okay. my officer friends, but they're all like O2. Okay. Um, I get, I, you get a couple letters from them. It don't matter. You ain't going to need a whole lot. You got a PhD from Oxford, my guy. Yeah, like Nick, you ain't come on, bro. Don't, like now, here's the question: Army or Navy? So, it, again, that comes back to the civil affairs thing. Do I risk it and risk being shoved into a role that I've, you know, no interest in doing, or do I go into the Navy and say, "Look, it's intel or bust." And and I'm so on let, me add, let me ask you this: Is the Navy telling you you can go into an intel role? 
Are they telling you like you can go in because you have a PhD? So I'm sure there's a couple programs where you can go to them and say, "Hey, I have a PhD from Oxford. I want to go into military, but I only want to do intel." Yeah. So Who's when, I to, when I talked to the recruiter on the phone, he said, "Come into the office." Okay. So there's no guarantees on anything yet, and there won't be until they write it down, right? So, so here's my thing. Okay. You in a little bit different position because you have a PhD from Oxford, all right? Yeah. The other thing is you're also not in a position because sometimes they'll just be like, nah, you go to OCS, we're going to give you the job we're going to give you, okay? Yeah. The Navy is a little bit different in that, like, they don't have a lot of job offers, okay? They got yeah. drive ships, fly planes. They got a little bit of civil affairs. Like there's a couple other ancillary jobs, but it's not like the army where there's a whole bunch of jobs. There's Intel officers, the cryptographic officers, submarine officers, right? Like there's probably 16 jobs in the Navy. Yeah. In the army, there's probably 60. Yeah. So I think you need to have that conversation. What I would tell you, knowing your situation, like go get it done now. Like go down, like, like, and here's the deal. They're going to try to get you to enlist. Okay. Yeah. No. The, the first thing out of your mouth is, son, I have a PhD from Oxford. Yeah. Okay. Um, who do you, let me ask you this. Who do you know stateside from your connections from Oxford that have any military connections? I have a buddy who DCO'd into the army into civil affairs but reserve component um okay. interesting program if i got a job um so i have that buddy um i have a few friends in the navy a couple of friends who retired out uh that's about it there's not many people who are like ranking officers no no no. no. i'm just saying like no no i'm talking about on the academic side from oxford so oh, like on, on the, the academic, academic side from oxford like do you have you're working with Russia. Is there? Did you did you meet some guy in the Pentagon that you would talk to from time to time? Was there any connections? Was there some guy from George Mason Political Science Department that you talked to? Right, like who did yeah. you liaison with in the United States, if at all? In the United States, nobody. Okay, so then that's I, it. I a couple of professor friends, but that's about it. Nobody. Okay, where goes. are they at? Uh. We have some at Columbia, NYU. Okay. Um, so I want you to do, I want you to call all of them dudes. Yeah. And ask them the question. Do you have any connections in the military? Yeah. Because you'll be surprised. Like some of them professors be like, oh man, I got General So and So's phone number right here. You know, I talked to him about this. He calls me about that. Okay. Right? Yeah. So there's that unique uh oh, I guess it, I'll use the word unique. There is a unique relationship between some of the educational institutions and the military yeah. being that a lot of the military guys come and get a you know a political science degree there they make friends so there's people in the academic world that have a tie into the military on the soft side like like i know joe joe is this let me call joe and see if we can't help you out that's what you're trying yeah. to get to right like you want some general to call up and say, hey, man, I need Nick to come in the Army. He's going to go civil affairs, and he's coming to work for me in the Pentagon. That's what I need to have happen. Yeah. Right? And then you'll go through the pipeline, and you'll be taken care of. That's what I'm, I'm – I want to have you taken care of rather than rolling the dice. I don't think rolling the dice is a bad thing. I just – you got a PhD from Oxford. How old are you? 29. 29. You're still young. You're good. Does that make sense? Yeah. You gonna remember so, everything I'm telling you? Yeah. So basically, up my networking game here. Try to expand that network. And I, I have some buddies who are at the Naval Postgrad School, so I can talk Perfect. to them. They definitely Perfect. Perfect. Yep. Uh, talk to them. Try to explain my situation to them mm. when I'm leaving mm. academia. You know. Mm. Mm. Don't no? try to explain shit to them. Tell uh, them. I'm trying to go in the military. I want to go do these two jobs. I personally yeah. think you'd be better off going intel officer than you would civil affairs. Because okay. when you get out, civil affairs is one of them jobs. It's like, what are you going to do with a civil affairs degree, right, with a job on, on your resume? 
but or something. I don't know. Well, when you get out with an Intel degree, you can do anything you want. Yeah. Okay. When you get out, I mean, not a degree. When you get out with Intel, you can do anything you want. You can go like you know, there's this new job in America. Uh, it's like analyst job at Google and stuff like that, and they're they're taking a bunch of Intel folks into that. Yeah. Four hundred thousand, like elite level Intel problem solving guys. You know what I'm saying? So. I would rather go. I would rather go Intel over civil affairs, but that's your choice. So Navy Intel, rather than roll the dice at the Army, or or if I have a connection at the Army and just say this has to happen. Yeah, yeah, you got to try to figure out which one is best, right? Like, yeah. and you can run down. It's just hard to run down the pipe for both of them. Yeah, I right? like like if the Army, the Army's gonna know you're trying to run down the pipe for the Navy. They both like it doesn't ever work if you try to do them both together. Um, I yeah. don't know why. I think it's stupid, but they always one of them will be like, "Oh, you're going to the Navy. We're not gonna, we're gonna wait and see what happens, and we'll put you up for the next board." Yeah. So I would tell you, take a couple weeks, right? Like maybe a week. You ain't got a lot of time because to get to make the October board, you're gonna have to shuffle, man. You're gonna have to run. Okay, yeah. you're gonna have to get in shape. Um, if you email me for the PDF, I'll just just run and swim once a day. Okay, that's all you got to do. And really, you ain't got gym membership. So as long as you just run once a day, you'll be fine. Um, and if you want to do the Navy SEAL PDF, just get the Navy SEAL PDF and work up to three, five, three, five, six on Saturday. That's all you need to do. You ain't trying to train to be no special operations dude. So as long as you run in five, six days a week, you'll be fine. But we yeah. got to try to get that run time down to 1230. Yeah. Now, that's only for the Army. The Navy, you ain't got to do nothing. You walk in the Navy out of shape right now, you'd be just fine. Okay. Okay. Um, let's get a game plan to see if we can't find some help so some people can make some phone calls. So strategize it up and then go to the recruiter when I have all that stuff in my pocket all ready to go. Yeah. I, and the, the question here is, so should I travel up to where the officer recruiter is? Because there is an officer recruiter in New London. Here it's enlisted where are you at i'm in new haven oh no you're in new haven don't worry about it just 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 go in there and kick the door down bro they don't have to get you to the officer recruiter but like you're not gonna enlist so like you got a phd for, like I, i'm gonna tell you this i will lead off with i have a phd from oxford i want to go on navy intel okay. yeah all right brother how else can i help you man i think that was really that was really helpful for just kind of guiding a little bit of what I need to think about and how I should start strategizing for this. If, if I want to do the October board or continue looking for a job and then go for the next board after, um, which is also an option, it's not the biggest deal right now to wait an extra six months or so. Um, it's a big deal for getting pay a paycheck, but that's in a different ball game, really. Uh -huh. and, and I think, you know, like, I think it's a hard thing to go get a PhD and then have to go work at Burger King. Yeah. Right. But I'm going to tell you this, my roommate from college, his dad drove cab for four years and he had a PhD in chemical engineering from Russia, but he got yeah. over, he couldn't do nothing in chemical engineering because no one would give him a clearance. Yeah. So, and, and you know, like they had it tough, man. You know, first generation Russian immigrants got a PhD, got to make it work, you know? So I just think it sucks because you go get this great education. You're thinking, man, I should, is, life should be easier now. And then you're like, golly, this, this, this ain't the case. Opposite. And all of your peers make way more money than you because you've spent the last five years studying. <laughs> well, 